We segue from one machine archetype into another as we take a look at the BES archetype, another GX era archetype used by Ryu Jin, who was a minor si a side character in the season 2 of GX, and he used an archetype uh, that is based on the bosses from Konami's Gradius games, which is interesting to say the least, because Gradius actually had a lot of cards adapted into Yu-Gi-Oh, but not exactly treated as an archetype, so yeah, I don't know why they, deci they decided to make BES one, but here we are, I guess. Anyway, let's start off with this archetype, and we start off with their first monster, BES Crystal Core. It's a level 5 with 25, uh, 2100 attack and 1000 defense, and when this card is normal summoned, put 3 counters on it. This card cannot be destroyed by battle. If this card attacks or is attacked, remove 1 counter from this card at the end of the damage step. If you cannot, destroy it. Once per turn during your main phase, you can change 1 face-up attack position monster from your opponent controls to face-up defense position. Okay, so the, so the first part of the effect is shared among all the BS monsters, uh, as in they cannot be destroyed by battle, and if they battle without uh, uh, without one of their counters, they instantly get destroyed. And yeah, Crystal Core is one of the worst cards in the archetype, since uh, his unique effect only switches for monsters from attack to defense position. I mean, yeah, it, it, some higher level monsters don't, don't have that many defense points so Crystal Core can run over them, which was somewhat decent when the, uh, when this card came out, but it isn't any relevant today. And uh, not to mention that this uh, this archetype lacks any kind of tri uh, tribute fodder, so yeah, it's... Uh, it's uh, you usually have to run some s um, side options and some minuscule tribute engines in order to get these monsters onto the field. And not to mention that the, they were severely lacking in the effect protection department, which they got some new support on and in the in the recent years. Even that is not any relevant because we'll get to that. Anyway, BES Crystal Core is not worth running, and uh, and s about the same can be said about their next monster, BES Big Core. This was actually one of their first monster ever, and it was recently reprinted to be BES Big Core, while its original name was simply Big Core. So yeah, it also hails from the time when archetypes weren't qu quite a thing, just like Don Zalug from the Dark Scorpions. Anyway, this guy has the, uh, the exact same uh, BES effects like Crystal Core, only difference is that it uh, only loses counters when it's battling a monster, so it's slightly better than uh, Crystal Core would do to higher attack, higher stats and higher level. And yeah, level 6 with 2300 attack is pretty damn decent, but here we have to understand that this was, this was all back in the day when this card was considered somewhat decent because nowadays anything ever can take care of this thing no problem and of course this thing lacks an, uh, or in originality since it doesn't have an effect of its own so yeah not worth it and now let me move on to something a bit more interesting which is BES Big Core Mark II another level 6 and uh, this one has 2400 attack and, uh, and 1100 defense so basically 100 attack higher than the previous one what an upgrade Anyway, uh, if you control no monsters, you can normal summon this card without tributing, but it does not get counters. However, if uh, it only gains counters when it's special summoned, and it uh, functions exactly the same way like the Crystal Core. Um, yeah, it's this is uh, this was one of the more different BES monsters that came out before the new wave of support, and. Uh, and you might be uh, saying that this is a very uh, a, a very flimsy card to consider running due to the fact that you need to specifically special summon this thing in order for it to even gain counters to live. Man, you'd be right if it wasn't for a certain uh, other card and uh, there and another card that searches out, which we'll get to in a, a few minutes. 
Next up we have BES Tetran, which is their last level 6, has 1800 attack and 2300 defense, has the exact same BES effects like Crystal Core and Mark II, and its original unique effect is that once per turn it can remove one counter from itself to destroy a spell or trap on the field. Okay, so this is the only BES monster in the entire arc that, that actually uses counters for uh, something else other than protecting itself from battle destruction. Well, from effect destruction if, uh, if it battles without a counter. And for a, well, for the longest time it was considered, I think it uh, is actually still considered their best monster, so yeah, kind of sad, isn't it? Yeah, anyway, you run this out of obligation, and that's pretty much it. Now we move on to the level 7 BES Covered Core. It has the exact same effect as the B. Uh, it has the exact same effects as the BES uh, cards so far, except it gains two counters instead of three. However, the condition for losing them is a bit different, as it requires you to toss a coin, and if you call it wrong, you will remove a counter. Oh boy, okay, so it has the potential to remain on the field the longest, that I'm gonna give it that, but relying on a Luxac to perform the most basic plays is as irrelevant as the Arcana Force archetype, which will also be uh, featured on this series quite soon. So yeah, not re not recommended at all. You might be saying, oh, rank, uh, rank 7 plays and all that, don't. Just don't. Anyway, next up we have their first and only level 8 monster, BES Big Core Mark III. Uh, and it has actually a pretty nice summoning condition. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position, for some reason. And it has the exact same uh, BES effects, only it actually gains counters if it's special summoned and normal summoned this time, which is a very nice thing to have on, uh, on like a new piece of support. And yeah, this thing is actually one of their newest pieces of support. And, it ha and its unique effect is that you can banish this card from your graveyard to shuffle all BES monsters from your graveyard into the deck. Okay, so this last effect is a bit confusing and... Uh, it is going to remain until we get, get, get to their spell and trap support. But let me just say that this actually synergizes with one of their spell cards, which we'll get to soon. And not to mention the special summoning condition is pretty neat, as it allows you to provide tribute fodder for uh, their other monsters, or to simply uh, gain an instant BES monster with three counters, which is, which is a nice thing to have around. Uh, I would actually run three of these because uh, it, because it's, it's a target for trade in due to its level eight, and not to mention by sending it to the graveyard with trade, and you can basically uh, gain some advantage that way. So yeah, and their final monster is BES Blaster Cannon Core, which is a level nine with 2,500 attack and 3,000 defense, and it has the exact same BES effects as. Uh, be uh, as uh, Mark uh, Mark Three, but it does not have its unique effect, and its special summoning condition is uh, an improved version of Mark Three's effect, and that is that you can special summon it if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, which is essentially the exact same summoning condition as Dino Wrestler Pancratops. But yeah, um, other than the special summoning condition, this thing has nothing going for it because yeah, it's really nothing too special but hey it's a level 9 monster and if you manage to bring out two of them you can basically go into true king of all calamities which is actually very impressive since we're talking about BES uh, here so yeah going into rank 9s this is basically this uh, this card's entire purpose so yeah. Anyway, let's move on to their spell and trap support. First of we uh, first off we start with the continuous spell boss rush. And the first effect is absolutely ridiculous on this one. You cannot normal summon or set. I w I want to really want to clap now, but yeah. Anyway, during the end phase of the, the of the turn that a BES monster uh, has de is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one BES monster or one because yeah yeah this refers to you can special summon one BES monster from your deck. 
so yeah, most of the monsters uh, you summon with this uh, immediately die upon their first battle. And the only relevant monsters you can special summon uh, with this are Big Core Mark II, Mark III and Blaster Cannon Core. Because they're the only monsters in the entire game that gain the counters uh, when they are special summoned. Or so, yeah, that was the case until their field spell came along, which is also their final card, BF Zillos. When this card is activated, you can add one boss rush from your deck to your hand. All BES monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense. Your opponent cannot target them with card effects, and they cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Once per turn, you can special summon one BES monster from your hand, and if a BES monster is normal or special summoned to your field, place one counter on it. Okay, so... This is, by all means, a 3 off staple, and I, and I cannot stress enough how much of a 3 off staple this is, because the archetype lives and dies by this field spell. Uh, upon, um, upon special summoning or normal summoning a BES monster, they're always going to have at least one counter on it. And if they and if you use it on a monster that gains a um, gains a counter upon normal summoning and then gains three counters, it's gonna have four counters. So yeah, counters everywhere, I tell you. And not to mention the protection is something that the entire archetype desperately needed. And the fact that it's placed uh, all condensed into this one little field spell makes it fantastic. But it's very prone to removal. So yeah, if this field spell goes, the entire archetype goes. That's the entire thing that I can say right now. Alright, now it's time for the grades. In terms of consistency, well, uh, there isn't much in terms of searching high-level machine monsters, and the only thing a piece of consistency is BF, BF Zilla searching out Boss Rush, which is cute, but yeah, it, 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 it's not enough to be considered to be uh, to pass one out of three because there aren't many cards that can search out high-level machine monsters consistently, and yeah, they don't have any uh, low-level monsters for easy tributes. So yeah, that's not uh, not very good. And the only uh, place of uh, easy tribute fodder is their field spell. So yeah, one out of three. In terms of power, okay, the field spell actually turns them into uh, somewhat legit beaters, which is fine, but the problem is, of course, getting them onto the field consistently, so, yeah, the potential is certainly there with, uh, with some of them, especially Blaster Cannon Core and uh, some of the other monsters they have access to, but that's all there is to it, so... I'm gonna g be a bit generous and give them a 2 out of 3 in the power aspect. In terms of comeback ability, once you take care of their field spell, there's no, there's pretty much nothing uh, for them to go do besides scooping, so 1 out of 3 there. In terms of protection, they have plenty of protection from battle, and the the only effect protection they have is within their field spell, but w uh, once they uh, that's they once that they uh, gets taken care of, there's pretty much no, nothing to protect them. Uh, to protect them, so there's one out of three. And as for the versatility, uh, if there was a card in the entire game that could uh, they, that could basically uh, trigger the activation of boss rush, for example, if you give boss rush to your opponent with something like exchange or gift exchange, and then use that said card to force its activation, I would actually gi mind giving them a 2 out of 3 in versatility. But this is BES we're talking about, so the only archetype they can somewhat synergize uh, with due to the having a level 5 monster crystal core, which is not even worth running, are cyber dragons, so they do not even mash well with those, so 1 out of 3 in terms of versatility. So yeah, only only the power output is basically the most relevant thing. And if the field spell didn't exist, I would have actually give the, given them a 1 out of 3 in the power output as well. So, yeah. BES is a very clumsily made archetype. I actually considered it to be the uh, one of the worst archetypes ever made. If not the worst archetype ever made. And... That w I would have actually definitely called them that if uh, if it wasn't for the new support that was Mark III, Blaster Cannon Core, and the Field Spell. And yeah, uh, this video would have been spoken in an entirely different tone if that was the case. But yeah, 
So that was B, yes, people. And next time we'll be moving on to the Duel Monsters era for one uh, peculiarly interesting archetype, to say the least, due to its background story. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. There's, there's an update, comment, like, and subscribe. As usual, I'll upload the next part and next vid whenever I can. So see you all, and have a good day. Peace.